but I, I want you to say something about you know another kind of related issue a year after Fukushima. Where what effect has this had on our nuclear industry? Yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, a big part of the news there was the meltdown of the Fukushima nuclear plant, and uh, interestingly, it's had uh, a huge effect in Japan. There are 54 nuclear power plants in Japan. All but two of them are closed, completely shut down. Yeah. They provide a third of Japan's electricity, and they're not running. And the Japanese are turning off lights in offices. They are burning a lot more fossil fuels. They are doing all sorts of really extreme conservation measures, turning off the air conditioning in the summer to get get through. Uh, and politically, uh, the government doesn't have the support to turn them back on yet. In America, it's meant almost nothing. In fact, uh, the Obama administration, through the Nuclear Regulatory Commission last month, approved licensing two new nuclear power plants, the construction of two new ones in Georgia. It's the first time since 1978 uh, that we've approved new nuclear power plants. And, and the reason, I believe, for this is that um, when you look at electricity needs for America going forward and you look at the need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, it's very hard to get there taking nuclear power off the table. Nuclear power provides 20% of the power in, in, in 20% of the electricity in the United States. Solar, wind combined is 2%. Well, where, is, where are we now in the yeah. process? Is this going to happen? You, you mean uh, the cuts to the buoys? The um, to, no, yeah. I think uh, I think some Congress people are going to jump in and put the money back in. That's, if, if you made me bet, that's what I'd say. Well, as we mentioned, another major effect of the quake in Japan was the triple meltdown of the Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant. It raised questions about whether a similar incident could happen here in the U.S., where there are more than 100 nuclear plants. Many are reaching the end of their approved lifespan, and there could be problems with the way the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or NRC, oversees relicensing of these plants. Here's an excerpt about the Diablo Canyon plant from the documentary Danger Zone. Zones in the world. Many think it's only a matter of time until the big one. This may be the facility that, if something does go wrong, it could be our Fukushima, not because of a tsunami, but because of a massive earthquake that could cause catastrophic damage. State Senator Sam Blakesley represents the district that includes the Diablo Canyon nuclear plant, considered the most seismically dangerous in the country. And if we're talking about something over a magnitude 7. Blakesley knows the devastating power of earthquakes better than most. Um, he has a Ph.D. Clubs. in earthquake studies, and he's been urging the NRC to take seismic threats more seriously. In 2008, he became even more alarmed when a seismologist with the U.S. Geological Survey discovered a new earthquake fault. Looking offshore, I found a number of small earthquakes that previously had looked kind of scattered actually lined up along a line that ran basically right along the coastline near the Diablo Canyon nuclear power plant. Jean Hardebeck's research points to a dangerous possibility. She says that the newly discovered shoreline fault could combine with another fault called the Hosgrey to create a powerful earthquake right at the plant. A similar scenario surprised Japanese seismologists at Fukushima. But the owners of Diablo Canyon, Pacific Gas and Electric, say there's nothing to worry about. They say Hardebeck's analysis is flawed and the plant can operate safely for years. Having now completed a very rigorous and thorough feasibility study, I'm both pleased and excited to announce we are officially beginning the process to seek license renewal for the Diablo Canyon facility. I could not understand why the utility was racing to relicense before the seismic information came forward. It was almost as though they were afraid of what they would find. In the wake of the Japanese disaster, Blakesley called for hearings and confronted an NRC official. And we're now in a situation where we have information about a shoreline fault, a new fault in my district next to my constituents, and you're telling me you're just going to continue business as usual and not delay to get the information before you do your site safety review. And that's unacceptable. The shoreline fault is well below the ground acceleration that the plan is designed to. How do you know that? based on the scientific studies that have been performed today. By and, whom? Uh, there was a number of folks that were involved with that. PG&E was a party to that. We expect licensees to do those studies. But relying on information from licensees to determine if a plant is safe may put the public at risk. 
These PG&E documents, obtained by the Center for Investigative Reporting, reveal that despite their public claims of safety, PG&E's own seismologists have considered the implications of a magnitude 7.2 earthquake along the shoreline fault. This graph shows the ensuing shaking could exceed what the plant is designed to withstand. The problem is, with the magnitude 7.2, you're getting perilously close to the limits of the facility. But Even in its in formal report to the NRC, PG&E sent another graph, this one showing no seismic concerns. They told the NRC that because the shoreline fault is segmented, it can't rupture with nearby faults, and therefore a larger earthquake at the plant is impossible. Hardebeck says that way of thinking doesn't add up. The data I'm looking at, it actually doesn't make sense to the earthquakes along the shoreline fault and very clearly go all the way to the Hosgrave fault. PG&E declined our request for an interview, but in a written statement said, Diablo Canyon was designed and constructed with seismic safety in mind, and components of the facility were tested to withstand probable ground motions resulting from nearby faults. We should be asking the question, why isn't that work being done by other seismic organizations which have no direct financial interest or benefit in how or when that data is viewed, reviewed, and interpreted. One of the reasons there isn't that kind of rigorous third-party independent oversight is because the NRC doesn't ask it, doesn't demand it, doesn't seek it. Well, Danger Zone was produced by the Center for Investigative Reporting in Al Jazeera and can be viewed in full on kqed.org slash this week.